Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is March 12th and right now we are looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. Check out our trough here. Bringing a powerful storm into California right now, and we're bringing precipitation back up across the region. You can see the low pressure center moving up across the northern portion of Vancouver Island. We've been talking about this low for a while, and some of the deterministic models were showing a much deeper low at times. But the artificial intelligence European kind of kept things in check, and it did quite well in the extended range with this system. So, kind of interesting to see that gives me a little bit more confidence in what the artificial intelligence European model is showing. And if you look back, out across Pacific Ocean, we've got this jet stream developing. We're going to keep that storm train pointed at the Pacific Northwest. Windy conditions off and on. Some nice mountain snows incoming here as well. We'll take a look at all this as we go through the video here this morning. Taking a look at the Aviation Weather Center here by the National Weather Service. And if we zoom in a little bit there, you can see some of the individual stations getting some rainfall out there. Looks like 44 at Seattle. Some gusty winds across some areas here. Uh, Whidbey Island looks like it was gusting 35 knots last I checked. You can see Portland at 48 miles per hour and kind of the off and on rainfall with this system. So just one of the many services that the National Weather Service provides when you're out there going to an airport and whatnot, your forecasts are based on the data brought to you by the National Weather Service. And if we take a look here, you can see another thing they do. Here's the maps out there and you can kind of see where the cumulonimbus clouds are, the tropopause height, the jet streams and everything and all kinds of stuff here done by the Aviation Weather Center. And there's all also something known as area forecast discussion. So you can see if I click on any one of these individual areas, each one of those has an aviation weather discussion. So if I click on that, you can go to full text and you can check that out and you can scroll all the way down. You can see the aviation center. Uh, section there and we've there's also hydrologic outlooks as well and all these watches warnings and advisories for example the weather channel it does not do that stuff all these watches warnings and advisories come from the national weather service the base data collection comes from the national weather service so it's just important to know that stuff and this is the seattle one as well there is a special little discussion there for SeaTac airport to be uh, exact as well so yeah fun stuff there um, but now taking a look here at 300 millibar height. So this is the trough we're dealing with now and the system we're going through currently. There's that powerful storm into California as well. And then you can see this jet stream just absolutely supercharged here, well over 200 miles per hour at about 30,000 feet. So yeah, if you are a flight controller for an airline, you're watching out for that thing. Some strong turbulence, no doubt on the north side of that. You want to avoid that if you're traveling back and forth towards Asia or something to that effect. And then you can see, again, the storm track is going to be pointed at the Pacific Northwest, additional systems developing here as we go through the upcoming weekend and on into the early portion of next week. You can continue to see some of these troughs rolling in here, maybe a transient ridge or two, but we look to stay active as we go towards the end of the month of March. Now, looking at 700 millibar temperatures here, so if we scroll out here, right about there is when that jet stream, you can see why it's so strong. You've got this polar lobe up here. You've got the, the warm, moist subtropical air to the south, strong gradient there between those two temperature differences pointed again at the west coast of North America. And if you want, check out the World Wide Weather Watch channel and we'll do some fun educational stuff and check out some crazy weather across the planet. So let's take a look here at 500 millibars. This is great for looking at general ridge and trough position. If we put this into motion, there is our potent storm into California and the troughing here remains across Pacific Northwest. Some gusty conditions for the Pacific Northwest as we go on into this weekend at times. And then we've got this system we got to watch there. That could bring some strong winds with it as well. Again, depending on just where some of these lows track. Bit of a transient ridge there. Doesn't last long. Another system comes rolling in here as we go through next week. And you can kind of see, again, the Gulf of Alaska troughing a southwest moist flow back into the Pacific Northwest as we get system after system rolling back into the region here. Now we're out to March 23rd and still this would be warm and wet or yeah, I shouldn't say warm too much here. You got to use that as a relative term. But yeah, you can see we are going to be dealing with the active weather all the way potentially towards the end of March. If you believe the artificial intelligence last night's run, they're all the way out towards March 26th. So 
Something else to talk about here as well is we got the system rolling across the region here, often on precipitation, some snow for the higher terrain and whatnot. And then we scroll in into Thursday, and we're going to have some cool air aloft. And watch this happen as we go into Thursday night. You can see some of this is showing some uh, wet snow getting down to some of the lower elevations here, mainly for western Washington. I don't expect accumulating snowfall like down on the I-5 and things like that. Things are relatively warm on the roadways, and but it, it might make for a nice scene later. Late Thursday night and on in through Friday morning with some chilly air aloft. It could bring the snow levels down a bit here. But again, not a big disruptive snowfall. It becomes increasingly difficult to get sticking snow into the lower elevation as you start to head through the month of March. Now, the European also, let's see what it shows for that same time frame. We're going to scroll out here towards Thursday night, and you can kind of see it continues to show some activity across northern Snohomish and up towards uh, Whatcom, uh, Skagit and Whatcom County there as well. Some snowfall into some of the lower terrain, and then you can kind of see that the hint of that as we go through Friday morning coming up across some of western Washington. Right now, it looks like it'll just make kind of a nice wintry scene more versus more of a disruptive snowfall. We'll continue to watch that, but you know, we're not, we're, we've still got southerlies at the surface and whatnot. We're not looking at any kind of Arctic blast or anything as we go through uh, Friday morning coming up. And if we look at accumulated positive snow depth and change in inches, the reason why I keep mentioning this here is because you can kind of see as you go on in through the day Thursday, see some of these amounts starting to pop up there. And again, I wouldn't expect disruptive snowfall down on onto the major surface roadways uh, down towards sea level, for example. But you can see it does hint at that a little bit. So you may see some flakes flying in the air as we go through late Thursday night into Friday morning. And if we take a look at that at 5,000 feet, so here's Washington right there. And as we scroll on in towards Wednesday, you see we get this kind of slug of cool air there. And the slow pressure center as it comes in, it's not displacing that cold air for the most part. You see the low pressure is down here. So that's where that chillier air aloft is going to be as we go through again Thursday night and on into Friday morning and then we will warm things up a little bit after that where we're not looking at any lower elevation snow funding you see additional systems pushing on in towards the region there as well so uh, 925 millibars this is the high resolution model and again you can kind of see that come in on the day Thursday some of that chillier air hanging around so we'll take another look at this tomorrow morning as well see if the models want to back off on that or if they double down on some of that wintry precip getting down into some of western Washington and total snow Kachera ratio I'll scroll through this as well and you can kind of see that the North American right at the end of the run there uh, Friday morning does show a little bit of some of that snowfall there for western Washington. Again, not a disruptive snowfall event. Now, looking off in towards what is coming here. So this is European Artificial Intelligence. Here we are as we go through uh, this morning here on Wednesday. And you'll see that frontal system kind of sliding through here. Then we've got this system coming. This could bring some blustery conditions maybe for the Oregon coast. You see a bit of a pressure gradient there as we go through the day Friday. Another storm system comes into the coastline there. you got to watch these ones here that start to develop right near the coastline. You see that pressure gradient there. It could bring some windy conditions for the Oregon coast. Precipitation continues so yeah you got to watch out for those low pressures that are developing along those bear clinic boundaries as they move up into our area and then you see we don't not much rest for the weary here as we go on through March 19th there's the 20th there's the 21st right there just additional round after round of precipitation potential atmospheric river even showing up in the extended forecast there as well so yeah lots of stuff to watch over the next few days let's take a look at the GFS quickly there's Friday's system pushing on the coastline and that's got a decent pressure gradient some blustery conditions would come with that as we go through friday friday night and then again you got to watch these low pressures here as they are spinning up as they move towards the coastline see that it's a late breaking system there and when they're deepening approaching the coastline it always gives you a concern and i always pause when i see those because you got to really watch out for that activity and then again you can kind of see we get a little bit of a break maybe next week for a day or two but then quickly the storm train returns on the gfs as well shows something similar to what the european artificial intelligence is showing as we stay active through the month of march now gfs this is 15, 16 day temperature uh, precipitation anomaly there and you can clearly see the wet signal here for much of washington in Oregon, some of Vancouver Island, down into portions of central northern California. And this is the artificial intelligence 15-day precipitation anomaly as well. So this is above and beyond what we normally get for this time frame. And if we take a look at 100-meter wind speed, so this is the storm system we're dealing with today. See a little bit of some gusty activity up and down the coastline. Not too crazy, though. And then we deal with the next frontal system that comes rolling in here as we go through the day. Friday, some gusty winds. Again, not too crazy there. Northwest and 
interior. And then we deal with this one. You got to watch these again, these late breaking lows towards the coastline. It could bring some gusty winds. And if this tracks a little bit further north and is stronger, then it opens up some of western Washington to more of those gusty winds there as well as we go through this weekend. And again, uh, artificial intelligence, this is total precipitation in actual amount. And again, you can see the fire hose kind of pointed at the Pacific Northwest as we go through March 26th. Now, this is another thing that can be fun to look at, 24-hour multiple run trend in inches. So these are, uh, this is the artificial intelligence European model, and you can go back in the six-hour chunks. These are previous runs, and you can see which run uh, brings how much precipitation. And then you can kind of see it's been trailing off on this system a little bit, trended upwards with this system here as we go on in through Wednesday night into Thursday. And then you can see it's been trending upwards with this one off into the future forecast here. So this is a running 24 hour total here. And again, these are different model runs here over the last few days. Now looking at Seattle, Tacoma, you can see that uh, with some of these systems here, I mean, look at this one, uh, ensemble member number 40 showed 70 for Seattle. But again, the vast majority don't show anything near that, but you do have some stronger storms in there. If one of those low pressure centers is deepening as it makes landfall and it kind of takes the perfect track. Any individual area along uh, Oregon or Western Washington up into Southwest BC can get some locally windy conditions. So that's what we watch for when you see that. That's why I mentioned uh, the, some of those lows breaking, you know, or late developing towards the coastline. You got to kind of keep that in the back of your mind and you got to watch that for additional development. And now looking at accumulated positive snow depth change in inches, 144 hours out, got some nice amounts coming for the Cascades. And again, this is only 144 hours and the storm train will continue to bring systems in as we go on into the second half of March. Here's the 6 to 10 day below, the 6 to 10 day west is above, 8 to 14 day as well, kind of keeping that above average signal going there. And this was something that was put out a few days ago here, the week's 3 to 4 temperature outlook. You can see equal chances here for the west, but look at that bullseye here on the Pacific Northwest as we go through April 4th and the fun stuff there. And again, we need the snowpack for the higher terrain, not too great for a La Nina year. Here's the average departure, uh, temperature departure from average through March 10th. And you can kind of see we have been uh, generally below normal here across the Pacific Northwest since January 1st. Kind of a La Nina signature there, but as far as precipitation is concerned, we have been below normal across western Washington, western Oregon also. So anyway, hope you guys are enjoying the channel. Click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow, and I will talk to you guys then.